Welcome back, friends. We have much to discuss. First thing for today. Uh, on Friday, I did a uh, live RARcast episode uh, with Halfred, who's the, the host of the show, and also uh, Venericio from TankingTips.com, and Satori, who is one of the uh, guide authors on TankSpot. Um, if you were there and you listened in, then awesome. Thanks a lot for listening in. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and if you missed it, uh, it will be going up on RARcast uh, sometime in the next few days here. I believe Half said he's actually going to make a, uh, a two-parter out of it because we ended up talking for like two and a half hours about a whole bunch of stuff that was going on. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, it should be pretty cool. It was a lot of fun to, to go through with them uh, on the show. So uh, yeah, should be pretty awesome when that goes up. Next up, for all the StarCraft or StarCraft 2 fans out there, um, I wanted to give a quick plug for a guy by the name of Day9. Uh, he's been doing a daily show for quite a while. He actually streams it live on uh, Livestream.com, uh, but then you can go back later and look at all the old uh, episodes he's done too. So um, Basically, he just takes a, a StarCraft match. He, he's either casting it live or he'll go through a replay afterward and uh, like just explain what's going on, uh, go through the go through the whole thing and be like, look, look here, this is what this guy's doing, this is what that guy's doing. He's basically the Alton Brown of StarCraft. It's pretty phenomenal. Uh, it's a really a lot of fun to watch. Uh, if you're just a little bit into StarCraft, or if you're you know you're playing StarCraft 2 right now, maybe and just getting absolutely blitzed and have no idea why, or even uh, if you you usually know why, but you're just looking for some interesting ideas, definitely check out his live stream page. Uh, the link is, I'm going to put it up this direction, I think, uh, livestream.com slash striderdoom. I don't know why it's striderdoom, uh, but that's what it is. Uh, that's Day 9's commentary. It's pretty awesome, so definitely check that out. Finally, before I get into today's topic, I just wanted to mention again real quick, uh, I will be doing another StarCraft II video uh, showcasing the Terran units. Uh, I believe the plan is for that to go up next week, so definitely keep an eye on that. Um, once the uh, the once I've done that video and I've sort of gone through all the races at that point and showed off the units, um, I am still going to be doing StarCraft videos. I'm not 100% sure exactly what I'm going to do with them yet. I've got a few different ideas, um, but there will still be StarCraft 2 videos coming after that. So keep an eye out for those. Should be pretty cool. I think I've said that like three times this episode so far, but there you go. All right, so we're like two and a half minutes into this episode almost and I haven't even gotten started on today's topic yet and holy crap do I have a lot to cover. Uh, the Cataclysm class previews have been coming out for every class except Paladins which is coming out a week from Friday uh, on the 16th. Uh, but basically there's just been a whole lot of information released about just kind of the general direction that each class is going in uh, in Cataclysm and some new ideas that they're throwing in each of the classes and you know updates to old mechanics that sort of thing too. Um, along with the, the mastery bonuses, so if you haven't read those yet, do go read them before I start talking about this topic, just because you're really not going to have much of an idea what I'm talking about if you haven't. So uh, go ahead and go read those, pause this, come back, uh, I'll wait. Okay, welcome back. So I'm not going to go through every single change that's happened just because I only have like 10 minutes to work with here and that's not nearly enough time to talk about absolutely everything that's going on. Uh, so instead I'm going to break things down into just kind of the different uh, general directions that classes are going, uh, specific new abilities that I just think are cool, uh, you know, just basically the stuff that just jumps out to me as being like, hey, you should talk about this in front of 50,000 people on the internet. Alright, first I want to talk about the healing changes. A um, little bit of backstory first. A lot of people might not know this, but uh, when I originally started raiding uh, clear back in Classic in uh, Blackwing Lair, uh, it was as a Holy Priest. Uh, that was my first character that I really raided on. Um, now back then, uh, a Holy Priest had basically five spells uh, that mattered on their bar. I mean, there was uh, Power Word Shield, there was Renew, there was Flash Heal, there was Greater Heal, and then there was Heal Rank 3, or sometimes 4, depending on how much gear you had. Now the important thing there, uh, basically with the down ranking, was that it, uh, it cast at about the same speed as a Greater Heal, but it healed for about as much as a Flash Heal and it cost next to no mana. So the, the, basically the way healing worked back then uh, was that you would you know, you'd keep up Renew, you'd, you'd throw out a shield when you needed to, 
but most of the time you were sitting there going, heal rank 3, heal rank 3, heal rank 3, just to sort of keep the tank stabilized as they took these hits. And if the tank took a big hit, uh, you'd either throw a flash heal or a greater heal at him, depending on what sort of situation you were in, uh, just to top him back off, and then you go back to the heal rank 3. That made this really cool sort of like managing your mana mechanic. Uh, out of the whole healing game at that point. Uh, a lot of people look back to WoW Classic and remember, oh yeah, back then, you know, it was healing rotations. You heal now, and then when you're out of mana, then the next person heal. Uh, that was the case early on in Classic, in like Molten Core and stuff, but as people started to learn how downranking actually worked, uh, pretty much everybody started shifting over in that direction. So you had this sort of uh, basically fill-in bread and butter spell that pretty much every healer had some form of that going on at the time. You had this fill-in bread and butter spell that you just kind of spam to keep the tank stabilized just so you know you were doing something. Uh, and then when the tank took a hit, then you'd heal him back up in a hurry, but that would cost you extra mana to do that. Now the reason that whole trip down memory lane is important is because that's basically the direction they're taking healing again in Cataclysm, which is awesome. Uh, they're not doing it through downranking anymore though, that's what the new heal spell is for Priest, which I guess isn't really a new spell, but they're kind of doing that whole thing with it. And that's what the greater healing wave and healing wave sort of switchery, doobery, hoo-ha thing is for Shaman. Uh, basically it's just adding that sort of slow but incredibly mana efficient heal back into the healer's arsenal so that they can then have uh, healing be more about keeping your mana keeping your mana afloat more or less and keeping in line with your regen as much as you can but still being able to save people when things start going wrong basically it just makes healing a lot more tactical and a lot less white knuckle spamming the crap out of your keyboard I also want to talk really briefly about the Death Knight rune change because it's kind of been getting swept under the rug in the face of the whole uh, blood being the tanking tree thing. Um, if you don't play a Death Knight right now, the way the rune system ends up working is you've got this really, really complex rune and runic power rotation that you go through that basically means you use every single GCD on something and pretty much every single one of your GCDs is already spoken for. Uh, the problem that arises from that is if you get a dodge or a parry on like your or a miss on your your icy touch or your plague strike basically uh, that throws the whole rotation off you basically then have like six or seven gcds worth of abilities and only five gcds to do it in just messes everything up now uh, the other problem that the rune system has is it doesn't react very well when things start to go wrong uh, like if you're tanking an instance and you know somebody pulls an extra pack or something and you just don't have a blood rune available uh, for a blood boil or something to real quick grab aggro and everything then they run around like crazy and start killing the healer and the group is going oh my god terrible tank why don't you pick up these mobs now the way they're changing things to work in cataclysm is instead of uh, instead of every rune regenerating on its own instead they regenerate in in pairs more or less uh, you've got two blood runes, two frost runes, two unholy runes. When you use both blood runes, uh, the first one will regenerate, and then once the first one finishes regenerating, that's when the second one starts regenerating. Basically what that ends up meaning is that you don't get to use abilities as often, but you can also save up your runes and not be as penalized for it. Now obviously that's a pretty massive change, and that means that once beta starts, we're probably going to see a whole lot of other changes uh, happening to the Death Knight class as a whole, but the the general idea is pretty cool. It frees up a lot more GCDs for them to have Death Knights do other things, and they did mention that there's a lot of abilities that are probably just going to become free that don't cost anything. Uh, and it also lets you, you know, just react to things a lot better. I also want to talk about a few of the new abilities that I think are just plain cool. Uh, Leap of Faith, or Life Grip as most people have been calling it, just sounds awesome. I mean, you get to pull a friendly target out of harm's way over to you or, you know, maybe into harm's way over to you, if that's just the sort of thing that you'd like to do. Uh, a lot of people are actually thinking that it might not make it through beta because of that, because, you know, I mean, people are going to be yanking people all over the place. Of course they're going to be dicks about it. But I, I don't think that's the case. I mean, I'm a paladin. I've been able to cast Hand of Protection on the tank forever, basically. Uh, if someone wants to wipe a raid over something stupid, they can do it. I mean, the priest could just as easily not cast their healing spells if they wanted to. So, I don't think it's going to be removed. I think it'll probably make it all the way through beta, and I think it's pretty cool. The real big one for mages is Time Warp. 
Uh, Blizzard has basically finally been convinced that someone other than Shaman needs to be able to cast Bloodlust. I don't care what faction you are, it's called Bloodlust, just deal with it. So, it's really cool. They've got this Time Warp ability now, which seems to be a mirror of Bloodlust. The wording wasn't exactly the same in the preview. Um, hopefully once the beta starts, we'll be able to get a good look at it. But from the, the post that Ghostcrawler made about it, um, and just, you know, general guessing on my part, it, it sounds like it's just going to be Bloodlust. Alright, according to my calendar here, I now have about 13 minutes worth of footage. I am going to have to find a way to fit into a 10 minute YouTube video, so I'm going to have to cut myself off from there. Uh, but definitely check back on Thursday for another episode. I will probably be talking about a lot of this stuff again, you know, sort of giving my whatever it was I just did uh, for that again. Um, and probably some speculation on what we're going to see in the Paladin preview also, because I'm a Paladin and I'm going to talk about them if I feel like it. So, uh, check back on Thursday. I will see you later.